Premier, thank you very much indeed for joining the programme. Thanks, Sarah. How much does your gas reservation policy save businesses and consumers on their energy bills? Uh, well, it looks like it's going to be a great deal. So uh, compared to the eastern states, Western Australia's electricity prices are not going to climb like anything remotely similar. Um, we have a 15% reservation policy, which means that for all the gas that's exported, 15% has to be used for local consumption, whether that's industry or households. Um, so uh, we have a big export industry, but we reserve some for local use. That's been in place since uh, Alan Carpenter, the Labor Premier in 2006, put it in place, and it's worked well for our state. And clearly has a big impact uh, on retail prices and the situation for households in your state. It does. So this year the price increase was 2.5%, but we gave every household a $400 credit on their bill. So in effect, prices went down uh, this year quite significantly. Uh, and across our forward estimates, we're estimating around inflation rate increases in electricity prices. So that's, what, 2.5%, 3%. That's very different to the 56% increases expected in the East. So I think there's two main factors involved here, Sarah. One is the uh, reservation policy on gas, which West Australia's had for 16 years. And secondly, the fact we haven't privatised our ele electricity assets. Let me just go back to that, what Alan Carpenter did in 2006. How was he able to get the big gas companies, who obviously wanted to export as much as possible, to agree to something that wasn't in their commercial interest? With a great deal of difficulty. Uh, I was a minister at that point in time, and uh, the then federal government, you remember the Howard government, they objected to it. They called it uh, Venezuelan, uh, like it was Hugo Chavez was doing it. And then uh, some of the big oil and gas companies objected strenuously. But to his credit, Alan Carpenter stuck to his guns. A policy was put in place. That means for the gas that uh, ex exported, 15% is reserved. So it's, it's, uh, it's plentiful and it's affordable. Uh, and it means that we don't have the problems the eastern states have. So, in essence, the argument was these resources belong to the Australian people and so their interests must come first. Is that right? That's pretty much it, that um, we need to have some available for our own use and we don't just send it all to Japan, China and Korea. Uh, and uh, that's the price you pay uh, for uh, having those export licences. Look, the industry didn't like it at the time, but now it's seen as a wonderful initiative and across the board it's accepted by industry, both the oil and gas industry itself but also other industries that are downstream users of it, uh, particularly down here in Perth. How long did it take for the big companies to accept that it was good policy? Well, it might have been some years. It's hard to say. Uh, but now it's seen as a prescient and uh, very uh, wise decision. And I think you'll find uh, that the people who are critics would probably deny they were critics now. Uh, but uh, at the time, as I said, it was quite controversial. But we had to, we had to be very insistent about it, and uh, there was much gnashing of teeth. Threats to sovereign risk, there was threats to you know, won't be any further investment. There was all this sort of stuff went on. Uh, obviously, that all turned, to be, turned out to be wrong, uh, so the policy itself was correct. Your former Premier, Alan Carpenter, has said that it's ridiculous and unfathomable that it hasn't been adopted as a policy nationally. Is he right? Yes, he is. Uh, obviously, what Western Australia has shown, reliable electricity, affordable gas, reliable supply, um, none of the sort of uh, chaos you're seeing in the eastern states. But it's more than that. It's also the fact we didn't sell off the assets like New South Wales has. So we have a sort of a much more uh, steadier, more um, reliable system. Uh, than, they ha than they have in the eastern states. So it's both things coming together. What do you say now to your federal colleagues who are struggling to find a solution to soaring gas prices? Well, they need to look at what works both here and overseas. I, I think there's a pretty good model here in Western Australia that we put in place. Obviously, um, producers of gas in the east wouldn't like it, uh, but um, you know, Australian national interest and the people of Australia must come first. Internationally, most, if not all, other energy-producing countries do this. Do you know why, with the exception of WA, Australia hasn't gone down this path? I think it was always assumed that there would be enough available for local supply, considering our population, and for export. Um, but obviously that's not the case, so uh, that's, that's the assumption that we all operated on was incorrect. There's also... Periodically, as we found in 2006, as I said, I was a minister then, 
uh, that you know industry will say, some industry leaders will say, if you do this, uh, projects won't happen. And um, it turns out that is completely wrong. We've had countless billions. In fact, more than $100, billions of $100 billion of investment in gas projects in Western Australia since 2006. So obviously the sort of um, the bleating and the threats and the, uh, all of that uh, turns out to be inaccurate. Just finally, Premier, on the issue of these very high energy prices, do you think that the federal government should be offering targeted rebates, something like the UK government is doing with their energy price guarantee to get them through the winter? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, they've got a, a very, very difficult budget situation nationally. A uh, trillion dollars of debt, that's a thousand billion dollars. Um, they have to deal with that. And so, um, sadly, that's the reality of what they've inherited uh, from the last government. Uh, all I'd say is uh, pulling levers to make sure there's more domestic supply uh, and making sure there's more control over the system to keep prices down is a better model uh, than blowing debt further. Premier, thank you very much indeed for taking the time to speak to us. Thank you, Sarah.